Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, the President traveled to Asia, focusing on the global partnerships that will help bring jobs and greater security to America. That's November 5th to the 11th, or OCONUS. On Friday, November 5th, President Obama left Andrews Air Force Base on a 10-day swing through Asia, making stops in India, Indonesia, South Korea, and Japan. Exporting American goods to the emerging and booming markets of Asia is a crucial component of the American economy in the 21st century. On Saturday, November 6th, President Obama arrived in Mumbai, the largest city in India, and made his first stop at the Taj Hotel. The Taj was the site of the horrific terrorist attacks in Mumbai on the 26th of November, 2008. The President visited the memorial on site and spoke about the courage and determination of the Indian people. We'll never forget how the world, including the American people, watched and grieved with all of India. But the resolve and the resilience of the Indian people during those attacks stood in stark contrast to the savagery of the terrorists. President First Lady then visited the Gandhi Museum, located in the house where Mahatma Gandhi lived and worked, that is now devoted to his life and legacy. This is our first declaration of independence. Gandhi had a major share in writing. Inalienable right of the people. Sounds familiar. Yes. <laughs> After seeing Gandhi's meticulously preserved room and meeting one of his granddaughters, the president met with American and Indian CEOs and entrepreneurs to discuss the growing trade and investment between our two countries. The resulting opportunities will open up new markets and create high quality jobs in the U.S. by selling goods and services in India. We look to India today. The United States sees an opportunity to sell our exports in one of the fastest growing markets in the world. For America, this is a job strategy. As we recover from this recession, we are determined to rebuild our economy on a new, stronger foundation for growth. On Sunday, November 7th, the President and First Lady visited Holy Name High School, where they viewed science presentations highlighting clean energy and environmental awareness. This is an example of where the parents have something to learn from the, uh, from the children, right? Absolutely. Well, congratulations. We're so proud of you. Downstairs in the school auditorium, students invited the President and First Lady to celebrate Diwali, the Indian Festival of Lights. First they lit candles on the Diwali altar and were then treated to some traditional dancing by the kids. The students then invited the First Lady to dance with them and even pulled the President up out of his chair. That afternoon, the President visited St. Xavier's University, where he saw labor-saving devices intended to boost agricultural production and listened to ideas for empowering citizens through 21st century technologies like broadband. He then made remarks and took questions from Mumbai area college students in a town hall style meeting. India's future will be determined by you and by young people like you across this country. You are the future leaders. You are the future innovators and the future educators. You're the future entrepreneurs and the future elected officials. The president then departed for the capital, New Delhi, where he visited a historic site, Humayun's tomb, the final resting place of the 16th century Mughali emperor. At the same time as this is such a modern place, uh, it also is rooted in uh, you know, civilizations that uh, have ebbed and flowed for centuries. So it's spectacular. On Monday, November 8th, President Obama took part in an official arrival ceremony with the President and Prime Minister of India that included an impressive honor guard military man. He and the First Lady then laid a wreath at the Raj Ghat monument devoted to Gandhi before heading to Hyderabad House. This is a, uh, much improved over my uh, paperback version. <laughs> Thank you. There, President Obama met with Prime Minister Singh to discuss a whole host of issues that affect both America and India, ranging from the economy and clean energy to counterterrorism. At a news conference after the meeting, the president underscored the values shared by our two nations. As the world's two largest democracies, as large and growing free market economies, as diverse multi-ethnic societies with strong traditions of pluralism and tolerance, we have not only an opportunity but also a responsibility to lead. After meeting with several other government officials and Indian politicians, President Obama then dressed both houses of the Indian Parliament. And it is my firm belief that the relationship between the United States and India, 
bound by our shared interests and our shared values, will be one of the defining partnerships of the 21st century. This is the partnership that I've come here to build. This is the vision that our nations can realize together. Later that evening, the president attended a state dinner hosted by President Patil, where he got a chance to speak with the president and enjoy some food and cultural performances. On Tuesday, November 9th, President Obama left India for Indonesia, the second stop on his Asia swing. After landing in Jakarta, he went to the State Palace Complex to meet with President Yudhoyono to discuss a wide range of issues, including global economic recovery, along with regional stability and security issues. The President of the United States of America, His Excellency Mr. Barack Obama, will now deliver a return speech, followed by a toast, and the national anthem of the Republic of Indonesia will be played. He also attended a state dinner where toasts were made and the bond between the U.S. and Indonesia was strengthened. So, President Yudhoyono, uh, all the distinguished guests who are here, thank you for your extraordinary friendship and the warmth uh, with which you received the show and myself. Uh, and I promise uh, that it won't take so long before I come back. <laughs> On Wednesday, November 10th, the President and First Lady took the opportunity to visit the famous Istiklal Mosque in Jakarta. Christmas season, uh, the church uses the parking lot here at the mosque uh, because they don't have good enough facilities. And uh, he was pointing out that that's an example of the kind of cooperation uh, between religions yes. uh, and tolerance between religions that we we'll see here in the world. President Obama delivered a speech at the University of Indonesia, where he discussed our growing partnership with Indonesia and built upon themes he laid out in his Cairo speech because last year. As vast and diverse countries, as neighbors on either side of the Pacific, and above all, as democracies, the United States and Indonesia are bound together by shared interests and shared values. Indonesia is the most populous Muslim-majority nation and the world's third largest democracy, making it an ideal place to continue our efforts to forge common ground. On Thursday, November 11th, the President continued on his trip to Seoul, South Korea and Yokohama, Japan to attend the G20 and the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Meetings with the aim of boosting American markets and spurring job creation. The First Lady traveled independently to Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany, where she celebrated Veterans Day with our men and women in uniform who are stationed there, including some who have been injured in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah, it's though sometimes when you're here far away, it looks like we don't, we don't know what's going on, but one of the things that I'm making it my uh, role to do as well as Jill Biden, the Vice President's wife, is to bring the issues of military uh, members and families to the forefront. To find out more information on any of these topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week.